is broken once again, and many thanks for staying with us right here on the number one breakfast show in the country, Morning at NTV. Remember, on the, after the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, yes, students were recalled, yes, to come back home. And then the next strategy was homeschooling, and that included use of the internet, online learning. But then we also do know that there are some dark owners on the internet. As your child goes to the internet to actually continue with homeschooling or home learning, there's a dark, dark space on the internet internet where you have people, unscrupulous individuals, grooming young children on the internet. That's why right here in morning at NTV, we were cognizant of this fact. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, all the whole of 2020, I remember making a clarion call to all the parents. As your child, as you allow your child to use that gadget to actually get onto the internet, you need to be cognizant that you have some dark spots on the internet through which unscrupulous people can be able to groom your child, either with homosexuality, lesbianism, and so forth. So that's why I'm having Mr. Nietegeka Michael, the program director, Refactory, right here in studio to make sense of what is happening right now, especially now that online teaching has taken center stage during the online set of the COVID-19 pandemic. A very good morning, sir. Morning to you, sir. How Let's talk you? about the dangers of online teaching. Um, online teaching mm. has no dangers. Mm. Um, I mean, the, the only challenge that you have is the equitable access mm. to resources that, that enables everyone else to, to be able to access learning mm. as, as, as it is. But generally speaking, I, I think it, it was the right intervention at the right time for us to be able to continue teaching and learning while we're going through this pandemic period. So, oh. so I wouldn't say they are dangerous. Mm. It is being online mm. uh, that we could be speaking about here mm. that, that could then expose mm. the young ones mm. um, to some of these challenges that mm. we, we could talk about here. So you are saying there is no danger whatsoever. There are not dark spots on the internet that could actually. So, so they are dark spots mm. on the internet, mm. but online learning per se mm. has no dark spots. Mm -hmm. um, it's 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 like traveling on the road on the highway. It's that does it has its own dangers, but the the safety measures are mm. there. So, so the internet has quite a lot of dark spots, mm. if I could put it that way. But it's, it's, it's how do we then manage this process mm. is, is where we need to mm. be looking at. And I guess for me, um, it's, it's, it's how do we then equip people and the parents to be able to look out. And I guess right now and you block can those sites. And block those sites. Because mm. as a country, we are part of, of a campaign mm. run by the Internet Watch Foundation. And, and really the campaign is, is geared towards making sure that we, we find it, report it, and then stop it. So it is the internet that is a problem, but online learning, well regulated, is okay? It shouldn't have a All problem. right, so how do we make the internet safer for our children? Because this is an, a learning environment for them. Um, hmm. So first of all, we need to be cognizant of the fact, hmm. like any place in society, hmm. there will be pockets of people with bad intentions. Hmm. That, that's, that's number one. Number two, like you are aware that you have thieves and people who are likely to break into your home and you have secured your home. The same thing needs to happen online. So Uganda is part of the many countries that are participating in what you call um, the Stop It, mm -hmm. Help Children Be Children. That's the campaign that is currently mm -hmm. running. And, and the essence is to make the internet safe. The only way you make it safe is by trying to eliminate to the extent possible those that are perpetuating child pornography. Mm. And here we're very specific on child pornography. Mm. And so we have, there's a portal in Uganda called stopit.ug. Mm. Find it. So as a parent or as a citizen, if you come across any site that is perpetuating a child pornography, you stop it. I mean, you report it, and you report it on stopit.ug. Mm. They will do the investigation with the Internet Watch Foundation. And if they find that this is true, they will then bring it down. And mm. So if we can eliminate as much as possible, but also bring to prosecution those that are perpetuating it, mm. then we hope the Internet will be safe mm. for our children. How can we involve members of the public to contribute to this cause? So, so this is part of the conversation that mm. we're having this mm. morning. The conversation is how do we 
get um, report bad content. Report bad content. Mm. That's number one. But also number two, educate our children. Because you see, you and I, if you, if uh, I mean, my my daughter, my son yes. could be accessing content on this device. Mm. Now, this device has been set up by an adult, implying that the most of the content will be accepted by by this device because it's adult content. Mm. But my daughter could stray into this content like the curious children. Mm. You tick, I mean, you're picking on all links that are coming up. And in so doing, she will find herself into something else mm. that she had not intended to head into. And she could, because it could be somebody chatting her up and saying, can you show me this? And all, all innocence, she could go ahead. And then the other person uses the image. So how how much time do we spend with our children? Mm. That's number one. Number two, time to understand what they're using the devices. Because that's where the problem mm. is. How do we get to know what content they're accessing? Mm. And how do we educate them and safeguard them mm. that if you catch up on this, please mm. beware, let me know. Mm -hmm. If anybody sends you a message on an app that you've downloaded, let me know. Because you'll get all sorts of things. So, mm. so, so that's, that's really the intention. So how we need to educate our public, but also us as parents mm. need to have a certain level of responsibility. Indeed. Um, the, the Internet Watch Foundation has been gracious in terms of reaching out as many parts of the world. The, 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 the they are now running campaign in, in over 43 mm. languages. Mm. And the essence is to get the whole world to be part of mm. this. Um, and, and, and our intention is really to rally as much as possible the greater community Indeed. worldwide Indeed. <laughs> to Indeed. be part of this conversation. To be more awake and cognizant yes. of the fact that there is a dark spot in the internet that could actually make our children unsafe to operate on the internet. But then that takes us to, you know, this conversation. We mm. are not talking about the dangers of online learning. We are instead talking about the dangers associated. Yes. with online learning. Yes. So how do we prevent the victimization of uh, these young children who have been sexually abused? So, so the first place is anybody who's sexually abused goes through a lot of challenges. Now, just imagine a child mm. uh, below eight just mm. to know that they've been sexually abused. Yes. So, so creating structures uh, that enable people to, that enable these children to, to recover and, and have the confidence. So because just imagine a young child, I mean, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be devastated if, if, if I saw my daughter's, like, let's say, pictures online, mm -hmm. where, where she's, let's say, nude, mm -hmm. that would kill me. But just imagine what that will do to you. To I mean, my we're daughter. not talking about an 18 year old. We're, no, we're talking, not talking about a nine year old. We're talking about a nine year old. Mm -hmm. and, and these things are happening because you see, the way these guys do it, they will do it through the very basic things, the apps that the children are downloading. That's it, Michael. <laughs> it seems like they'll just target that app, that exactly. website, that online teaching tool on the website, and then just feed it with pornography. So, so, so to the people that are mm. building these platforms, they also need to be aware mm -hmm. that because they know the hackers or the, the people that are not in mm. bad intentions, they know that there's a lot of traffic that is moving towards these kinds of tools um, and so they're using it you you had at the time when um, this whole online thing was happening starting there was what was called zoom bombing mm. so you'd be in the middle of a call and somebody bombs your call mm. and starts showing off pornography stuff pornographic stuff wow and that was huge mm. And so Zoom so had... I'm looking at a Zoom class. The teacher is there I, in attendance yes, and then yes. boom. And, and, and that happened. Mm. Uh, quite a, a number of uh, schools or universities or meetings were bombed. As in, you're in the middle of a meeting and somebody shows up and is showing pornographic stuff. So these guys know. So Zoom had to institute a lot of security features. Mm. As, as the pandemic was happening. Why? Because it had become food or fodder for the hackers or the guys who have bad mm. intentions. Yes. And so it means that people are looking out for this. Mm. 
mm. and, and they will find you in your applications. Mm. And that's why it is important for parents to be extremely conscious. One of the things I advise parents is that w when your child is going online, mm. one of the things they require is to have an email account. If you're going to use Google Classroom or yes. whatever. Now, many of us allow our children, or we do it without knowing, allow our children to forge their age. Because if you're setting up your Gmail account, mm. it will ask you your date of birth. So if you lie, you'll be sent adult content. Exactly. The bot will think this is an adult. Exactly. No, no. I mean, your settings mm. are settings for adults. Yes. So it will open up YouTube for whatever content you want. It will open up all Based the apps the that you want. Based on the age you put it. But when you, when you say your child, when you, you allow your child to be a child, mm, yes, that's what you're saying, let children be children, Indeed. Mm. it will ask this account should be associated to a parent account. Mm. So whatever my daughter, for example, downloads, I get a report. So Google tells me she's downloaded this app. And so I can be able to review and then go ahead mm. and support my child. Mm. But th that's, that's, that's really, it goes from awareness to driving the conversation. To I see, terms. Michael, and indeed, you be, you, this is an insightful conversation. Thank I believe you. it is an eye-opener for many of the parents who are watching Morning at NTV. But acquaintance, there's this joint program, the yes. joint effort between Zambia and Uganda, the IWF Learning Awareness Program. Yes. Acquaintance, what yes. is it all about? So the intention is mm. really... Yeah, you, 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 you move faster when mm. you're together. And, and so as opposed to building it in pieces, mm. we move together. Mm. Now, the, 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 the learning program is then intended to help us. This campaign is mm. part of that learning program mm. that we, we educate mm. as many people as possible. So one of the things I would recommend us as parents or caregivers is look out for www.stopit.ug. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of content there. There's a lot of guidance mm -hmm. there. So I would encourage us to go there mm. and just learn what is this child pornography or sexual abuse. All right, we are talking about making the internet safer, online teaching and so forth. But yes. let's also interrogate some facts before I let you go, Michael. Yes. Um, on, we have only 40% penetration of the internet in this country. Yes. So we are encouraging parents to let their children use online uh, tools to be able to further their education. But yes. shouldn't we be cognizant of the fact that there are some students out there who have never accessed the internet in their lives and they might be left out, increasing the knowledge gap in Uganda between the rich and the poor? It's a reality, and, and that's a fact of, of, of life. But we hope our policymakers will get to appreciate mm. uh, that being online is no longer a luxury. It's a necessity. That's number one. Number two, it also means we need to be creative with our policy, especially the taxation regime. I hear you. Th that a smartphone should be a factor of production. Mm. Like, like the way you allow people to bring in machinery, allow internet or Removable computing TT devices. And stuff. Mm. Yes, so, so make these things accessible mm. because the reason we can't ac afford them is because of the tax component. Mm. Mr. Michael Nietzsche, give us your last parting shots before we wrap this up. Um, mm. my, my, my parting shot mm. is for every child caring parent or guardian or caregiver, mm. it is important that you invest your time and resources in understanding the internet, but most importantly, in understanding about the safety of the children online and what it means, because that place is wild. Michael Nietzsche, many thanks for having me at the time to speak to Morning at NTV. Pleasure is mine. Yes. Thank you. All right. You're still watching Morning, uh, still watching Morning at NTV. Let's take a breather. We'll be right back with more information. We have a lot more in store for you.